in China, in China usually when, when pressure breach, they will say, which means peace with you. That's how we, um, most of pressure will greeting people say, uh, peace with you. And tonight, uh, as I bring up this message, um, honestly, I left my sermon notes in my office. <laughs> I try to remember what I, I studied and pray that God will work in our heart and with His message and not my word. And you know, it's sometimes I think it's good. God used different certain stems to help us to recognize how we are uh, need Him in in time like this. And you know, it's just forgotten things. And tonight, if you have your Bible, please open with me to the book of Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah. We'll start looking from chapter one, and. I had my topic on um, uh, when you pray you need to hold on God's promise and when you serve people you know there's a purpose for the glory of God for the glory of God so there are basically two things uh, we're going to look through tonight one is how to pray with holding on God's promise and how to serve to Magnify His name or glorify His name. And let's pray and we'll start our message. Dear Lord, thank you for tonight and thank you for the time that you bring us together. I just pray that you will be with each one of us as we attending the fellowship and uh, assembling uh, in your name. With your blood has cleaned our sins. And I just pray that you will uh, holding us and to give us the word and help us to learn from your word. I also pray for Pastor and Mrs. Press, also all the teens and Brother Tosh as they are in the ranch. Hopefully, uh, those teenagers, they will have their decision made and help them to know you if they are not. I pray tonight you'll be with me as I speak. Uh, give me the word and strength the wisdom. Lord, I ask you how to pray all these things in Jesus name okay I will start to read uh, chapter 1 verse 6 uh, verse 5 sorry so and I and said I beseech thee O Lord God in he of heaven the great and terrible the terrible God and keep his com commands and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thy ear now be attentive, and thy eyes open, that thou may hear the prayer of thy servants, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sin of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned, how we have duty, uh, duty very craftily against thee, and have not kept thy commandment, or the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If thy transgression transgress, I, I will scatter you aboard among the nation but if thy, if ye return unto me and keep my commandment and do them through though there were of you cast off unto the uttermost part of the hell of the heaven yet will I gather them from hence and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there now there are these are thy servants and the, thy people, who has, who thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong, strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, that now thy ears be attentive to the prayer of thy servants and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servants, this day and, and uh, 
grant him mercy, grant him mercy in the sight of his this man, for I was the king's uh, cupbearer. So when we read this message, we know the background of uh, this book was written while the Israelites are in captivity, and they are being scattered around. As in this prayer, Nehemiah has mentioned that you know because those Israel people had ignoring or disobey God's commandments, so God has do what He say it, it is just because He commanded them that if they don't do His um, uh, as He commanded. He will do what he needs to do to uh, make the chance, I would say, for Israel to repent. Usually in, in time of difficulties, people are starting to look into God. Uh, many times I'm that kind of person, you know, when we are all peaceful, sometimes we slaughter and, you know, delay on our devotionals. And but when times like we need God to help us, and then we're starting to say, hey, Lord, I need you. And we can start to confess and details in our sins. So when we see this prayer here, Nehemiah made was not for himself, but for the nation of Israel. And when we see this message here, he did not <coughs> pray, just say, hey, Lord, I need this. And I need it now. And if you uh, know, if you read in the beginning of the chapter, you see they when he heard by news, he was stand fast and pray, and crying in front of the Lord. And now many, many times, we as people nowadays, we are pondering to have a party, not you know have a feast instead of fast. That's what we do. But in here, um, Nehemiah he pray with a humble attitude and he shows care to his nation, not only only himself. So when we pray, we got to pray with a humble attitude. That's how we approach God. As Brother Charlie preached on Sunday, that we need to compare, we need to, humility is when we compare us to God. That's when we see how really like we are nothing and that's a very key when we pray to God we uh, need to be humble in front of in front of the word in front of God God he's the God that created the whole world the universe was created by his word and he speak there is word and then everything was created so when we compare to God we need to have this kind of attitude of humility when we approach to approach him to pray and in our lives as I mentioned nowadays we uh, pray while we are feasting not when we are fasting when, when I do the study about this passage I check out some statistics on, on Irish American home spending on their food like average not maybe someone spend low and some spend high I think if I remember correctly uh, the lower one in Irish every American family spending around two oh no, around one hundred and twenty seven dollars every week so that's the average I'm not sure like if the true or not but that's the average lowest but because I'm Chinese, so when I see that number, I usually translate to to Chinese currency. And one hundred twenty seven dollars, if you multiply with six point seven now, so it's roughly seven, it will be around uh, one thousand RMB, like my currency. So that will be a wage for a normal person to work around two weeks. Like if you don't have any edu education and you work in the labor, so that's that's how it is. And by mentioning these numbers, it's not about say hey all Americans just overspending. But the thing is, in our lives, many times we are really focusing 
what we need, what we want. Even when we go to prayer, we're still focusing like how and what I can do. You know, uh, not being uh, saying I'm checking on financial things. Uh, actually, I do a comparison like what I spend on my first week of my work. Uh, for the first week of my work, I spending totally around fifty dollars for food. So relatively, it's not too low, it's not too high. But I'm I'm content with that. But it's really when you sometimes when you are financially, I want to say is when you are you don't have that much, so you know how to control it. That's lifetimes because we have so much in our life. We don't know how to approach to God. We thought we have everything. And that's another reason we are not able to humble ourselves to go to God and pray. Because we thought, hey, I had everything. That's another hard problem in American life. Not this, but last summer, I think I said a few times ago, uh, few, uh, when we go to the preaching the gospel, when we knock on doors, and they will have an attitude is, I had everything why I need a God. That's the attitude. And sometimes Christian we also easily falling into this trap of thinking we had what we need when we need God. So when we preach God we see in this message is Nehemiah was humbly in front of God. He was fasting crying loud a lot to God and he saw the humility in front of God even though you it's not his fault that this nation falling apart or scattered but he is the one when he hear news he had burden to pray for the nation. I know American is in the in the time of election and how many of us you know I'm not American but I pray for this country to have a good president. How many of us, if we are Americans, are we able to say fast for a meal a week to pray for our country? That's just, we never done it. But Nehemiah, he prayed, he willing to do the sacrifice part of his own comfort and humble himself to pray. And as we continue to see the second about the prayer is he prayed, he kept, and he hold on God's promise. And we know God's nature, he was never changed. Today is today forever, he's the same. And if we remember last week on Sunday, I mean this week on Sunday, Brother Leif was taught us about God's commandment. God's commandment is clear, it's not far, and it's obvious, and it's our choice. I see here, Nehemiah pulled that message back, says, Lord, we know we, we, why we deserve this situation. He did not go to God and say, hey, that's your fault, you already know everything, why you let us go through these things. Again, he confessed his sin and his fun household sin for the nation. You think like I, I really know in, in the uh, in my office there uh, a kind of painting and there's a water dripping and it says no one drop of water salt he will be the region of the flood. So as a nation or as an American or as a Christian, are we, are we ever thought this nation that exists today, we know it's chaos. Have you ever thought we are responsible for this? Are we really think about that? Maybe I did not pray for the nation. Maybe I didn't be a good example to the people around me. And if all the Christians, I say, can think through these things, 
and confide to our team, God may bring American bad guys to use the, the whole time. And that's the way when Nehemiah go approach to God, he approached, he confides, but he keep on God's promise. Because he said there, if we confess and then you will bring us back. And nowadays we, as a Christian, we don't want to God. I mean, we, we cannot, we don't study God's word. Even though we study, we only study the word like we like sometimes. Like the book I like was Ecclesiastes. And I always read that book, and I love Proverbs, so I read that book again and again and again. So sometimes, even as a Christian, we are picking out our food, say spiritual food. We're picking the thing we like to read. But really, many truths, is the truth was go through the whole Bible. It's not only one part. It's the whole Bible is the truth. How can Nehemiah know God's promise? He read from, I mean, he keep what he had and he know it. He memorize it. He remember it. That's why, um, in in, in some, the poem, uh, poetry, uh, David was saying, uh, "I'm a, I'm a hidden in your word in my heart, so I will not sing against thee." How many times we are willing to memorize and study God's word and then to apply in our life? I know our church we have a program to memorize the scripture. That's really something I think everyone should participate just by, you know, learning more God's word. And know God's promise, then we can hold on him. So when we pray, we approach God with humble. We pray, we approach God with confess of our sin. And when we pray, we hold on God's promise. That's what I want to say tonight for the prayer part of our Christian life. And then the other part, when we serve for the Lord faithfully to bring His glory. If we continue to read chapter 2, we know <coughs> um, uh, chapter 2 verse 5 and so, and I said unto the king, If thy, if it please the king, and if thy servant had found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, and to the city of my father's uh, scriptures, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, the, the king also said by him, For how long shall thy journey be, and when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I sent him a time. And if we go up one more verse, verse three, uh, <coughs> verse, verse two, sorry. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid. So when Nehemiah, he standing in front of in, in front of the king. The king recognized that something is going on in his life. I think that's not uh, hard for us to know, especially um, if you are parents. You know, if your child is not happy, and they were so on their face, but. When we see this passage here, we see, you know, he is a king, and he take he realized his servant is in a wrong mo motivation. I mean, mood like he, he know his servant was sad, and we can see from here is plus in the last verse of chapter one it said, "For I was the king's." Cup bearers. I think many uh, of you have heard this message about the cup bearers is the one who will test the one before the king drink it. 
which is very key position in the palace. From here we can learn and to at least it revealed to us that Nehemiah had been proved himself is trustworthy. <coughs> That's the reason you know he can get that position. So he served the king even though he was in captivity. He served the king with faithfulness and to prove himself is trustworthy. In our life, how long and how often that like, our boss can say, hey, this guy really working hard. This guy, I like to trust him. How many times our co-workers can say, hey, he's different and he is a person. That's, that's the difference. And then when we see this message here, not only Nehemiah proved himself trustworthy, but when we see when God when God working between these things, the king gave the permission for Nehemiah to go. And if we continue to read uh, this book, we see how the king provided all kinds of documents for Nehemiah to go through all the places and <coughs> provide the material for building the wall of Jerusalem. If he is not proof himself faithful to the king, how can he get that big favor from the king? And how is our life? Compared to the king that Nehemiah serves, it's only for a period. But because he served faithfully, he got favor from the king, but also we know because of his prayer. But when we compare that thing, we give glory to God because really God can work through all things. The same thing. <coughs> Today we have a king. It's Jesus Christ. Are we serving our king who died for our sin? with our whole heart and faithfulness. How many times and how long times that we spending time with him? Sometimes I'm first one I would say I, I'm guilty with that. You know when you work you're tired, you go back, you want to rest, you eat, you sleep, you woke up tired, you don't want to read Bible and on your way of work, take your phone out, read a few verses. Hey Lord, I got my work done today. That's devotion. I don't know all of you, but sometimes I did that before when I was in school years ago. I, you know, I was so busy, so many work need to come up. I woke up so tired and I need to go. And then take books, read a few chapters, or one chapter. So, okay, I've done my work. We don't spend time with him, we don't know how to serve him. Nehemiah spent time with the king, and he knows what the king likes. And he can perform perform the job like, with excellency. And that's why I think he got a favor from the king. And sometimes we are, as a Christian, we try to plead in God. But in our own way, we don't seek God's way. As a children, as a servant of God, of the heavenly King, we are sometimes, at least sometimes I was commanding God, <coughs> hey God, you know, we pray, say, Heavenly Father, and then we say, we need this, we need that. And I, I read a phrase a few days ago says, oh, but then we stop to asking for what we need and we're starting to really want to spend time with God. That's when we can build our relationship with God. We may spending hours and hours in prayer just pray for what we need, what we want. But we never considering what is God want us to do. 
So I hope the message tonight will help all of us to realize we, we have no right to say that's his fault or her fault or that's unbelievers' fault. I think that's our responsible to pray for this nation and for the country around the world, the leaderships. And then we can share the gospel through our good testimony. I don't know if the king was saved, but at least he knows that Nehemiah was a Christian. At least I know that. I mean, not a Christian, but he is Jewish who believes the God of Jacob and Abraham. So, um, I just pray that in our prayer, we learn from Nehemiah to approach God with humble, with humility, as Brother Charlie was preaching on Sunday. Compare ourselves in front of God, we feel our, how small we are. And we realize our sin and our mistakes in our life. You know, something going wrong is not others' fault. A nation, a country, a world going wrong. We had responsible as a Christian because we are a part of this world. But we need to pray for this world and for the leadership. And for revival for the church, for the revival of the country. And also, when we pray, we need to hold on God's commandments or God's promise. Brother Leif mentioned on Sunday, was saying, God's command is clear, obvious, not far, and it's our choice to follow. It's also our choice if we want to hold on God's promise. We can pray with whatever word we want to say, but really, if we can pray with what God taught us to pray, different and also when we see all those things we with a prayer heart we we serving no matter what career we are in worker house housewife husband student nurse whatever vocation we are in if we serve God with faithfulness it will bring favor <coughs> to you and I and also brings glory to God. Why sometimes we see that, hey, he has something, say, Brother Leif, he has so many sons there. Why Timothy has something he gave him, but Josiah has and he don't give him. That's because maybe Josiah didn't obey sometimes, and then Brother Leif say, hey, this is your punishment for this time, not giving you what you want. But if we can, if, say, Josiah can please his father, you know, by making things right and say that I'm not going to do it again. And he proved himself is not do that again. I think as a loving father, nice time when he, when Josiah did something and Brother Lee forgave him. And the, our Heavenly Father is the same way when we approach him with a right attitude. And that will help us to bring glory to God and to be a testimony around the people around us. The same uh, is illustration. When Timothy got what he wanted, and Josiah saw, okay, he can get what he wants because he obeyed my, my dad. So I'm going to obey my dad too. So that's the way I think it's not being greedy but being smart to learn from God's word because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. By learning God's word we will really know what means fear God. We will know how to pray. We will know when we do the right thing, serve with faithfulness, we will bring glory to God and also bring favor on us, on ourselves. And also bring good testimony to the people around us. That's the key for us today is to bring glory to God and to lead people to save through our action as well as God's word. Let's pray. Dear Lord, tonight, thank you for uh, 
everything you taught us and just help us to abide in you and to learn to be to be humble that really compared to you we are really nothing and even compared to the world that we just one of 10,000 million, million people Lord you create the universe and you know our heart and you had gave us so many promises but we are so weak and so faithful this and we just don't want your promise many times we harden our hearts to read your word I just pray that you help all of us that we will learn to abide in you and read your word and learn how to pray and learn to how to live a life that glorify your name and use us through our daily work and daily life. I pray all these things in Jesus' name.